All right, so we're gonna start just looking at the basics of Edpuzzle. I'll try to go through these pretty quickly because I think most of us have at least seen Edpuzzle before, but I wanted this stuff to be here in case you guys need to come back to it um, at any point, or if somebody hasn't used it, we can at least know that it's here. So um, Edpuzzle has tons of videos for you to choose from, or they, they aren't necessarily their videos, but there's ways for you to integrate videos from all sorts of places. Um, and then you can create your own interactive lessons and then also see the analytics from what they've done. So let's watch this quick little video so you can see. Oh, are you gonna be able to hear my stuff? You know, I'm not trying to be- Want to create amazing video lessons in minutes? Thank you. Can y'all hear mine? Or do I need I to- get on me. Where, why am I not? Hold on. Where's my mute? Yeah. Puzzle is your missing Can you hear it? With Edpuzzle, you can choose from the millions of videos available from YouTube, National Geographic, TED Talks, Khan Academy, and more. You can also reuse ready-to-go video lessons made by other teachers or upload your very own teaching video. Then, use Edpuzzle's video editor to create your perfect lesson. Embed your own questions to check your students' understanding, Cut sections to show your students only the most important parts of the video, and even record voiceover so you can explain concepts in your own words. Once you've finished, you can assign it to your students in just one click and prevent skipping to make sure your students don't miss a thing. When you want to check in on your students' progress, use Edpuzzle's hassle-free analytics to get all the information you need. See who still needs to watch the video, what your students responded, and their total scores. So remember, with Edpuzzle's free platform, you can make any video your lesson. Okay, so they're, they're specifically talking about... Ready to discover the world of video learning with Edpuzzle. Okay, so they're talking about the free platform, but obviously we have now upgraded to the paid platform, so the differences there are going to be that you guys don't have to worry about the, um, the content restrictions any longer. You can have as many videos as you want in your course, which is great especially for us because we don't we need all of our any of them you make you need all the time we don't go back and forth so um any questions about any of that right now all right so some of the reasons why ad puzzle are great is great is that um yeah when i used it i really liked the fact that you knew that um the students had to be interacting with it in order to keep moving on so, and also I like to be able to add my own little clip at the beginning to tell them information or what it was that I wanted them to be paying attention to because sometimes these videos are great, but they aren't exactly what you need. So it's a great way to do that. Um, and again, the fact that you can check in on them, make sure that they've actually watched it, um, how many times they've watched it and to see if they're actually getting that content correct can either be a great way to just do a little gut check. Uh, um, you know, you can use them for formative or summative assessments really. Um, and then you don't have to make your own videos. You can find things that are out there. And even when they aren't perfect, like I said, you can add your own voice in there. You can add your own questions. You can also cut like they talked about earlier. So you don't necessarily have to be um, doing all of the, um, all of the work. So again, here's some of the basic tools that you can use, cropping a video, adding your voice, embedding quizzes, um, you have the access to all of those videos um, out that are out there um, and then also making your own videos. So if you have one that you've created um, that goes through your content, you can still do all these things, same things to it. All right, so um, the way it works is you're just going to go in, you're going to look for a video that are, is already created um, through YouTube or one of the other channels. Or you can also find a lesson that's already ready. Some, some other teachers made it. They've already put the questions in there for you. Um, and you can look through those and see if you like the way their questioning is, where they've stopped it. Um, and if you do, you can use it just the way that it is. If you don't love the way they have it, but it's getting there, you can use it and then kind of edit it from there. And so it's taken out some of the steps for you. Um, or like I said, you can start from, a, start from scratch from a plain YouTube video and add your own questions in. And then, of course, you can also edit the video to shorten it, um, and then you're going to assign it to your students through Canvas. 
And so we'll talk a little bit about how to do that with Canvas. So um, the one thing you need to make sure, if you look over here to the side on my, if you see it on my screen and y'all's too, is I have Edpuzzle in my navigation menu over here, but that's not the default. So we need to make sure that that's on your, your course. Um, and so that's the same way you typically do any sort of adding of content over here. Um, so you would go to settings, <clears throat> and then you're going to go to navigation. And mine is now up here, but your Edpuzzle is probably down here. So you can either drag and drop it up here, or you can come to these, this and enable it. Okay, so that needs to be done in order to make sure that your students, um, so that you can be assigning things in Canvas. Um, and so once you do that, if you have these, um, once they're doing those assignments, they will be, you'll have those grades um, in your Canvas course for you, so you don't have to go off to another site to go check for that. Um, and do, 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 let's see. So yes, it can be done with SpeedGrader. You can use them from course to course. We'll talk a little bit about sharing between people in just a minute. Um, and they can use it through their computer or mobile devices too. So um, creating your account. Everybody should have gotten an email from Edpuzzle saying that your account was ready. Either if you already had an Edpuzzle account, it was going to show you um, that it was upgraded. And if not, then it told you the steps to get you your account going. To make sure that yours is ready to go, you'll want to look at your Edpuzzle account and make sure that it says Pro School Venture High School on it. So when you're ready to log in, make sure that is there um, so that you have know that you have the upgraded version. And so now here is how you're going to go through and add content. Um, you'll just search for a video. Um, you're going to have a my content tab where you can save everything that you use so that you can come back to it. And that's where you're going to be editing your, your videos that you take either from Edpuzzle or from, you, from YouTube. Um, and you can also search for things um, through curriculum or through school. So if you, if, you know, we'll have things that are underneath our whole venture high school of other teachers um, that we can access. Um, let's see, several other ways that we can do that as well. Let's, let's watch their quick video about all of that instead of me explaining it. When you're ready to find a video on Edpuzzle, your search options are endless. If you're looking for a ready-to-go video created by another teacher that already has questions embedded in it, use the Edpuzzle search channel. You can either type your search terms directly into the top search bar or click on the Edpuzzle channel first and then look for your video. Preview the video to check the questions, then copy it to your content where you can edit the video further or assign it directly to your class. So what about YouTube? To find safe educational videos, just click on YouTube under our popular channels and search away. You can also simply copy and paste the link of a YouTube video into our search bar to edit it directly. Some of our other most popular channels include TED Talks, National Geographic, Crash Course, and Khan Academy, so you can search their libraries of content exclusively. What if you want to explore the content from the other teachers at your school? All you need to do is click on your school channel where you'll be able to see all the videos your coworkers have created. Finally, once you have started to build up your own library of content, you can browse your own videos by clicking on my content. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel to find more tutorials on how to edit your video. Assign so again, lots of ways for us to find content that's already created or to use um, videos for, <clears throat> that are already out there to make them um, work for you. So once you have that video, you're gonna, um, you can edit it. Um, there's a menu that looks like this where you can edit, copy, assign, share. Um, but you do want to make sure you've watched it, obviously, before you assign it, or especially if you're taking one from another teacher, make sure you watch through it and make sure that the questions um, work for you, make sense for you, are appropriate, all those sorts of things. And then you're going to copy it and share, share, um, use it for your, your content. Sorry, the words are jumbling. 
Um, so this is this is going to talk. I'm not going to go too much into this because I want us to have a little bit of time to play in Edpuzzle. But this is going to show you how you can share this content between one another. Um, I haven't played with this enough to know if we're going to experience some of those same issues that we've had with Google Docs and Cami if you share between teachers um, directly. So I would recommend if like Ostrowski and Thomas, if you guys are using an Edpuzzle, that you do follow these steps to make sure that, that they're owned by you versus the other person. Um, and I think that's a pretty simple process. Um, so let's watch them edit a video. Now that you've found a perfect video, it's time to add questions. After you've copied your video to my content, select the edit option, which will open Edpuzzle's video editor. When you click on the questions tab, you'll see various options. Play your video, and when you've reached the point where you want to add questions, click on which step you want to add. You can also click on the timeline bar below your video, where you want to add your question. For multiple choice, just enter your question and your answer choices, making sure to select the green check mark for the correct answer or answers, and the red X for incorrect answers. To add a response, click on the plus sign where it says, add another answer choice. You can also add feedback for each response by clicking on feedback. As an added bonus, your multiple choice questions will be graded automatically. If you're looking for longer responses, choose the open-ended option. These types of questions are perfect for encouraging critical thinking, and you'll be able to score them and provide feedback on your students' responses as soon as they answer. The note option is perfect for when you want to add some more information or even record a brief audio comment. For all three of the options, you can also take advantage of additional features, including the equation editor, perfect for math teachers, or the option to add a hyperlink or an image. To add multiple questions or notes at the same point in your video, select the question type of your choice below, where it says, add another note or question here. While you're using the video editor, remember, you can always edit your question with the pencil icon, delete it with the trash bin icon, or move it by dragging it along the timeline bar. So, now you know how to add questions and personalize your video for your student. I love that, I mean, we can do this in Canvas too, but I love that you can give feedback on those answer choices so that um, when you get, when they're getting them wrong, that you can tell them why it's wrong or, um, Especially, I, I could see that in, in a math world working really well to be like, no, you did the wrong sign first if you're doing um, order of operations or something like that. Know that. Notice that my math knowledge is slim. That's what I pulled out. But, um, but I think it's really great to be able to give them immediate feedback. Um, so I'm going to leave this one just here for you guys so that you know that it's here. This is going to show you how to cut a video. So if you wanted to, if you love the beginning and the end, but the middle part was kind of not what you were trying to get at. You, this will show you how to cut that little piece out. Or if you want to skip straight to a part, how you can cut off the beginning. It really cut anywhere. So th these are here if you need them as you're editing. And then here are the steps laid out for you that she just talked through about how to add questions, notes, um, those sorts of things. Um, and this one again, this is going to show you, go into more information about how you deal with the formulas, the links, images, all those sorts of things that you can come back and look at if you need those questions more in more in depth. Um, and again, we, she showed us this, how you type, you just type straight into that box after you've ch chosen feedback to show students what you want them to see once they choose whichever answer. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about Canvas. Um, so we've already, um, ho hopefully you've already gotten all set up, um, and I showed you how to get it, get it into your course navigation, actually. So this is the same thing as what I walked through before, but if you need it again, there you go. So you just need to make sure that it's something that is viewable for the students. Um, you may have to do these next steps. Um, I don't think I did when I added it. I'm not sure why. Maybe I've already done this a long time ago. This may be if you've just now enrolled in um, Edpuzzle, but you're going to want to say um, that you don't need parental consent because we are all over 13. 
Um, let's see. And then once you're in here, you can go straight to that top. I'm not convinced that we are all over 13. But you're not convinced? Is that what you said? I'm not convinced. <laughs> I've seen Maybe. how some people act in the hallway wearing weird costumes and stuff. Oh, you're, you're specifically talking about teachers, huh? Not, not the kids necessarily. Right. Okay. Um, so you can assign those straight from this Edpuzzle link um, to your students. And then what do we have next? Okay, so here again, going through more steps about how you assign that. Um, you can also do that through the external tool, and that's the way you would be able to do um, the speed grader. So if you want to be able to use speed grader, you're going to want to make it an assignment, make the submission type external tool, um, find that, find Edpuzzle, and then you're going to be able to come in here. You'll see the videos that are in your content. You're going to want to click on that eyeball and it's going to open up your video um, and then you'll assign it um, and then hit select and save. So my, my um, soapbox for a second is anytime you're doing anything in Canvas, if you can find a way for it to be an external tool, um, I think that that, I mean, I really feel like that's the best way for us to do things. So in this case, I would agree that this is the way we want to go unless you're not wanting it to be. If, if you know, we talked about this with um, H5P, if you're just doing it for, just for them to kind of check their understanding and you don't care about the grade, then you don't necessarily have to do it this way. But I think a lot of times our students wanna see that they're getting credit for what they've done. So this is the best way to go about it. And anything that you guys have asked me to look into, the first thing I do is try to look to see if we can do this in Canvas, because I think especially in our world, us not having to go to a hundred sites to check things when we have kids all over the place is so helpful. And again, knowing that our students pretty much always ask if they have to do it, <laughs> It's always nice to be able to say, yeah, it's for a grade. So, um, so then as far as grading, um, you can, you can see those grades. Obviously, if it's a, an open-ended question, you're going to have to do some grading on your, on your side, but if it's um, a multiple choice, then you're going to be able to see that into, in your um, Canvas gradebook. But you can also go into Edpuzzle, the Edpuzzle link on the sidebar over here, and be able to see what's going on in on that video in your course. So you can see how students are doing, see how many have watched it, see how far into it they've gotten, how they're doing on the on the quizzes, and be able to look at each of the questions to really be able to see, is it a, is it a great question? Is it, you know, do I need to refine that question a little bit so people are getting it better? Do I need to find a different video because they're not getting it? Or maybe I need to add a, um, a voice note in there so that they, I can explain it a little bit better. Um, so great ways for us to see how that's working. So we have like 20 minutes. So what we're going to do now is I want everybody to use this last little bit and go and create an Edpuzzle for your course. So um, you can use all those tools back there to help you um, with any of the steps. Um, there's kind of laid out here for you in the assignment as well. Um, and then once you have it, you're going to send us the link in this um in this submission type um and so we can go back and see what you guys have done um and miss parsons are you on here she was at some point let's see i am you are okay are you fine with them just working on this and submitting it or and yeah. I, mean, I can i can stay on and if people want to be doing it walking through it together um i'm here but you can also just go work on this on your own, especially if you're somebody that already has an Edpuzzle and knows how to use it and don't, don't need me to, good with that. then that's fine too. Anybody have any questions or thoughts? People, who on here has used Edpuzzle? Can anybody speak to things that you love about it or don't like about it even? Sarah Kai, can you share anything how you use it? Um, yeah, I'm, um, I mean, it's good because, um, so, well, I like to do video quizzes to make sure they're paying attention because yeah. otherwise they don't really watch them. Sure, and sure. I, I like to do them on paper because I think it's easier for the kids, but this makes it even easier than doing it on paper because I can put the questions right after the answers come and then they can go back and re-listen. And also it saves me time because I'm not having to go over and try to get them where the question should be. Come in. And um, I, have to, I don't have to go help them find where the question is because it comes right after. Now, I did make one today where I was kind of being sneaky. Um, they were working out some problems on um, 
a circular flow model. And I actually put the question before I gave the answer to try to get them to work out the problems. <laughs> so we'll see how well that goes over. Probably not very, but I thought I'd give it a try. But um, yeah, I, I think it works really well. It keeps them on track. And then I can use some of these videos as lectures because I found some real good ones lately. And um, that way I know they're watching and it's, it's kind of an alternative to taking notes or whatever. Um, are you finding the ones that you like? Are you finding them already created? Are you taking YouTube videos and making them yourself or how, how are you using it? I, I'd say it's a combination of both. Some of them that I like I found and I've just kind of tweaked them because honestly on like Edpuzzle, I don't try to make them difficult. Um, some are in there, but I, I just want to know that they heard the information. I'm not trying to make it difficult. So sometimes my answer choices are like a serious one and then like kind of like a sillier one yeah. because I, I mean, I just want to know that they heard it. I'm not trying to make it difficult. Um, so there's that, but then I feel pretty comfortable doing them myself and on. I also like to stick notes in from time to time. That's kind of fun. Yeah. And I mean, how many, how many of us have had videos in our course and kid comes up and asks us like, how do I do this, miss? And you're like, it was in the video. Did you watch the video? No. And you're, so that always was, cause you know, we go out and we spend all this time either making a video or finding a video or whatever it is. And then they don't even look at it. So this is, I always like that, that this kind of threw some accountability there and be like, well, you have to do that piece. So you're going to have to go watch that video. So, and it's going to tell you how to do the rest of the assignments. Go figure. So Bruton, did you have anything else to add? I know you said you use them too. Uh, I was going to say what Sarah Kai essentially said is, you know, it solves the problem of where do I find this answer? Well, it's right there. Yeah. Um, I have a question though that maybe some of y'all have, you know, have the answer to. Um, so I like when students do like the fill in the blanks for the videos because it gives them like notes that they can use later on. Um, and when you do an ed puzzle, they don't have something that they can keep and review. Right. Um, is there a way for students to like download their, their responses or have something that they can refer back to with an ed puzzle? I haven't seen that, but let me look and see if I missed it. Anybody else know? Um, I wonder, I mean, I guess if the answer is no, I wonder if, well, if after they've completed it, like you could give them the answer key essentially, like they've done it, you know that they took the quiz. Now here, here are the notes you would have had if you were, if we were able to print them out. Um, you could, you could maybe, uh, we, the cami is kind of what we use, you know, they watch a video, it's not an ed puzzle, mm -hmm. but they watch a video, then they fill in the notes, we grade it, and then they still have it. Is there a way that you could add a copy of the questions down, you know, after the ed or on the same page as the ed puzzle. So where they could go in the and fill in the answers on a, ed um, on a cami. <clears throat> um, you couldn't make them both be the submission type. So oh, because it's on the same page. Right, one of them, you would have to choose one or the other, but you could still have the ed puzzle embedded. So, I mean, that might be a good idea for those types of things to, you could stop it and just put a note there that says, did you hear the answer to number one? <laughs> like to help them oh, yeah. guide them on, this is where you needed to be looking for that thing to fill out in that cami or whatever. So, I mean, it's That's not- a good point. Yeah, I like, I like that, you know, uh, just so they don't have to go back and like rewatch this section, you know, so many times. Right. Um, and if you make it to where they can't fast forward, it's not like they're just going to go straight to those little dots where the answers are. Right. Okay, cool. So I like that. That's something to think about. You just couldn't grade the fact that they had done it, but, but I think you would still be able to see, you would still be able to see in the analytics on the, on the tab that they, how much they'd watched and how they'd done on any other questions you had, you know, so that. that yeah, then I can see their answers on their blank. Concerned about how they're doing, but that just wouldn't mm -hmm. go into the grade book. So good question. Anybody cool. else? Okay have any um, thing that they love or don't love about Edpuzzle or questions about Edpuzzle? All right, well then I will let you guys go. Now we, we've taken up a little more time, but see if you guys can go ahead and get at least one created or if you have one already, I'm sure that we can just take that too. So just copy and paste the URL from your course that shows us which Edpuzzle you have created. And we will, um, and then. Krista, where are we turning these in? on this assignment in um, the PLC Canvas page. There's, um, 
it's this one with it has a green check and it says create an ed puzzle and embed in canvas it's on okay. november 2nd it should be the last thing in november 2nd okay you're looking for ones that are already created do they have them like sorted by most popular or most um I think there's several ways you can look for them. You can certainly go up to the top and search for something. So if there's a specific content area that you're wanting to, something you're specifically wanting to teach, you know, I saw her put in there Jupiter's moons or something. So it'll pull up all the videos that are about Jupiter's moons. Um, so you'll want to look in the Ed Puzzle. On the left-hand side, you'll go to Ed, the Ed Puzzle link, um, and it'll pull up everything that's in their, um, in their library. Do you I see just that? Typed in something that we do, and there's millions of them. So it's like, kind of like to, if I didn't create one myself, I'd like to use. I don't have to sit and watch them all. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean that that does find a good one, you know. And again, if you already have videos that you love, like you already have a video in your Canvas course that's a, a YouTube link or it's a Khan Academy or something like that. Um, I don't know if you um, you can also put that URL into the. Um, I think it's up in the search content. Bruton, is that right? Do you know? Or Sarah Kai? That's where you put it right? Here, let me show you. To see the URL to see if they made videos for Ed Puzzle? Um, not even necessarily that, but you can come here and put in this um, in this box. You can put, put paste a URL from any YouTube video and it'll pull that YouTube video up and then, then you would then go in and add the questions that you wanted. So... But some of these YouTube ones, the voiceovers, like I thought, okay, I like the graphics on this one. You know, that's the biggest thing for geometry if I'm going to start from scratch is the graphics, having to create them. But it wouldn't let me do a voiceover. It said YouTube content, something, something. So okay, some of them you wouldn't be able to do your own voice. Send me a link. Well, yeah, send me a link to whatever that was, or you and I can look at it tomorrow. Okay. Because I'm curious as to what that is. I, I don't know what that is. I couldn't do a voiceover on it. Interesting. I don't know why that would be necessarily. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions or thoughts? All right. Thanks, y'all. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Hey, Miss Hanks, when you're doing Ed Puzzle, how long? That's what you're talking about, right? Ed mm -hmm. Puzzle. Yeah. How long does it take to create an Ed Puzzle? It, um, it depends. I mean, it shouldn't take too long. You, it depends on, I mean, you, again, you can go in and find one that's already ready to go and oh, okay. you're going to want to watch it. Right. Um, or it would just take as long as sticking a couple questions into a video. Of course, it would take you as long as it would take you to watch the video and know where to put your questions. Oh, but I got you. Yeah. It's, I don't, I don't think it's a hard or time consuming thing beyond finding the video and and so if you do your own video, you would insert that in your own video. But if you do a, I didn't listen to the whole thing, sorry. But then if you, if you, um, but if you do a YouTube video, then um, it's all good unless they take that off of YouTube, right? Yes. And that, I mean, that is a problem. So I'll sh show you like on here, um, like I can go to Ed Puzzle and search for, I don't if I'm trying to solve one set of equations, if I look at this, I can see this six with the, the little teardrop. Yeah. And that tells me that that one already has questions into it. So I would want to go through here and make sure that I liked all these questions and like the video, and then I can copy it to my content. Or I can go to YouTube, find any video that's out there, yeah. put in my, my questions that I want. And sometimes you might not even want questions. You just want to shorten the video. And this is a great way to shorten your videos and not worry about um, that. Or if you look on here, I have, I put it, I think I was trying this for something you asked me about. I stuck in the video. Well, of course, this was on YouTube. So that makes sense. But this is the video that I created for you. Yeah, yeah. It was in YouTube. So then I can go into it and ask questions throughout it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, I think it seems like a really cool tool and we're paying for it. So I'm, well, I was going to ask you about that. Oh, yeah. Spanish was supposed to pay for it. And I guess Madeline said it came out of general operation fund or something. I, I don't know. Do you want that money? 
We got too much money to go around, so we're. I good. know. I'm like, I was counting on that twelve hundred dollars coming out of Spanish, so we'd be further down. But now, can Spanish buy um, our remind license in exchange for? It? Okay, so tell me real quick. Um, what? Tell me again. I know we texted, but tell me because I don't remember what did. What would that do for us? So there, it's an. Like you have, I, I don't know, I don't remember how many characters it is. We have a certain amount of characters we can text with our license. So you have to be pretty short with your messages. Um, so this would take that off. They, you can call, um, you can voice call anybody that's on your remind list as well. Um, and then there's like school wide messaging. So if we needed to send out something like, you know, a, a snow day or something like that, it could go out to the whole school versus each individual teacher having to do that. Um, it did also say that there's an integration with Canvas, and I need to look to see what that means, but I'm assuming that means that it, maybe, maybe it even sends out, you could send out this, maybe link announcements between your course and the Remind. Yeah, like a teacher's, a teacher's Canvas announcement could go through Remind, so a kid could click I think, on I mean, that. I would have to confirm that that's what that means, but that would be my assumption, or maybe that it tells them that there's a new assignment and that kind of thing, which that's not as important for us because right. our assignments are all there, but. How much, how much was it? It was $4 per kid per year. So I estimated 1200, but that's not even what, what we're at right now. So here's the thing that gets me with some of that is, I know they do that, but sometimes if they know that we are. In and out. Numbers come in and out, like, it's almost like can we can we you know purchase the 300 and it doesn't matter just, which 300 people are yeah using and i can it. i can show them historical evidence that we almost never get over 300 but we have kids that come and go and they drop out and mm -hmm. so a lot of times if they know that i just don't want there to be a oh you hit your quota and we just right. spent 1200 well and then another question worthwhile is to ask is like what if the kid changes their number like does it transfer over to the new number or yeah because you're mm, hold on because if we're paying per user are we paying for the parent phone number and the kid phone number or it's per school enrollment and we can send it to a thousand people but your payment is based on your enrollment is what yeah I wonder, unfortunately, it, maybe I'm it's like linked to an email right it can be yeah. you would almost think it would have to be tied to enrollment because the idea is that you have i mean my kids are signed up for their reminds and so am i so you would almost always have right so it's almost like an honor system like you know we're gonna you know, we have 300, which is fine. I mean, tw how much does ESL have? Maria? ESL doesn't have much. It's Spanish. Um, yeah, it's Spanish yeah. We have. I mean, we have so much money. We're just, it doesn't. 3,500. 3, which, I mean, I've spent a thousand now on getting her a new power sink tray, but um, cool. I'm going to make a dent in that two other $2,000. That's fine. No, I think, and these are, this is the year to try. 